So I want to talk about boron enolate and aldol reactions. And up until this point, we haven't actually looked at what a boron enolate is. We've learned about a whole host of other enolates, az enolates and enamines and uh, silyl enol ethers. Uh, and in fact, the silyl enol ether is the one that's going to be closely reminiscent to this type of chemistry. Boron enolates are fantastic in aldol reactions, but their greatest importance is actually in their control uh, of the, the reaction that we, that we get. Um, so here's a classic example. It's taking a symmetrical ketone like this and treating it with a, a boron enolate. And when we treat it with a boron enolate, uh, the, what we're treating it with is a dialkyl boring reagent. So there are two groups attached to the boron, and then there's some leaving group on this boron. So we can just write an X over there. And then typically we must also use a base. So this mechanism that we're going to do now is very, very close. It's almost identical to the mechanism of forming a silyl enol ether. Uh, and so what happens is boron is a brilliant Lewis acid and it's got an excellent leaving group on it, such as chlorine. Uh, and so the first step is that the lone pair electrons of oxygen attach the boron. We kick out um, the halogen like that, or the leaving group, I should say, uh, and we get this intermediate over here. So it's B with two alkyl groups, whatever they might be. And of course, the oxygen is positively charged. Then we have now acidified the alpha position. And of course, this is symmetrical. It doesn't matter which one we go for. Uh, but the weak base can now come in and deprotonate to get our boron uh, enolate. Uh, and so our product looks something like this. All right, now there are a few things that I want to actually point out uh, about these um, for now. And um, the first thing is just what I've done here. I've made a particular type of enolate. In this case, the boron enolate is cis, but it could also be trans. And that's going to be one of the most important things that we need to, uh, that we need to look at. And it's going to depend a lot on this R group over there. But before I get there, um, I just want to point out that the boron enolate itself is actually incredib uh, incredibly reactive to, uh, to aldehydes. And so this reaction that we've done over here actually can be done com as compared to the silyl enol ether. It's actually done at very low temperatures. We can get this at minus 78 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, but when we add our aldehyde, um, this is so reactive that we can still do this reaction at minus 78 uh, degrees Celsius again. Uh, and what happens is the boron, being a good Lewis acid, is able to complex to the oxygen of the aldehyde. In doing that, it activates the enolate to then react with the uh, aldehyde like that. And so afterwards, we end up with this. I'll just use benzaldehyde, it's a bit boring, but anyway. Uh, and we end up with this over there. So we have formed uh, a new carbon-carbon bond in a very typical old old fashion. All right, there's the new bond that's been formed over there. Um, of course, the boron is now ended up on the oxygen over there. And typically, we would do an oxidative uh, workup, uh, which uh, involves just adding um, some uh, peroxide. Um, and uh, and base and this then forms the uh, alcohol product like that over there okay so that's the basic idea um, but we as we've seen before we're actually creating two new chiral centers and boron enolates are absolutely fantastic in terms of controlling these two centers. And what we've learned from the zimmerman traxler transition state is that the control has everything to do with whether the enolate that formed is uh, cis or trans. Uh, and so there are actually a host of different boron enolates that can be studied in this respect, uh, but we can stick to two very simple ones that will give us the opposing uh, cis or trans uh, enolate. And the reason for their control is actually just to do with sterics. And so if I take our same ketone like this, and what I reacted with is a cyclohexyl, bis cyclohexyl boron chloride, 
the cyclohexyl groups, you imagine on this boron, they've got two big cyclohexane rings. So when that reacts, it's actually very sterically bulky. So again, it's at minus 78 degrees Celsius. It's very sterically bulky. And what it does is because it's so bulky over there, the methyl group here actually doesn't want to be in the cis conformation or configuration. It rather wants to be trans. And so very cleanly and efficiently, we can form the trans uh, boron enolate when we have the cyclohexyl uh, substituents like that. Um, and if we have the trans uh, boron uh, enolate, we're going to end up with the anti-old uh, anti product. So in the transition state, we would draw our little chair. Now we don't have lithium over here, but we've got boron, and we've got the two cyclohexyls, uh, Right there, if we want, cyclohex, cyclohex. They're not important in the whole thing. Right, and so if I aldehyde, there was the phenyl in this case in an equatorial position. And this is in a trans uh, fashion over there. And of course, there's the other ethyl group over there. So this is the, the, uh, the Zimmerman tracks of transition state. When this reacts, the methyl group is on the top face, and the OH that we get over there would be on the bottom face. They'd be anti to each other. In other words, the product that would form out of this would have the methyl facing forward and the OH facing back. But remember, of course, that this is just one of the uh, enantiomeric transition states that we would see. Um, there is the other one as well, so the product is formed is racemic. But like I said, this is absolutely fantastic control uh, greater than 97% um, selectivity for the anti-stereoisomer. Uh, so that's absolutely incredible. Um, the other boron enolate that we need to uh, learn about is just uh, its dibutyl boron. Uh, and... Uh, now, this is one little kind of trick that's over here, is that actually the better leaving group is uh, triflate, uh, not, the chlor the, not the chloride. Um, so that has to do with its sensitivity to the particular base that gets used. Uh, if you use the chloride and the triphylamine, it actually starts going a little bit more towards trans. There's a complicated transition state that you'd have to look at. Um, <clears throat> but here, if we use uh, this plus uh, the amine, typically is um, a Hunix base, uh, also again at minus 78 degrees Celsius. Um, simplistically, these butyl groups are not sterically bulky. And so here, the preferred uh, boron enolate will be the cis one like that over there. And this we can plug into the Zimmerman Traxler in exactly the same way, and there we'll see that we get the syn product uh, at the end, um, obviously after oxidative uh, workup. Uh, overall, boron inlates are really good nucleophiles. We're just going to, in this course, stick to them reacting with aldehydes. We don't have to think about uh, looking at different electrophiles, uh, but we're just looking at this, and this is the, the basic uh, amount of work that you need to know.